there. I'm Amy from thecrazycraftlady.com. I have been on a major bell crafting spree lately. I, it's kind of like I've gotten it into my mind thinking how many random things can I either turn into bells or how many dollar store bells can I transform with a little bit of paint to match my decor style. So today I'm going to share with you all of my favorite bell crafts that I've made lately. I hope you enjoy them. Let's get making. Mm -hmm. Last holiday season, I saw this set of three ceramic bells on the Pottery Barn website for like $100, and maybe they were jumbo size, I don't know, but that seemed like a lot of money for three bells. They also currently have ornament versions on their website that were originally $12.50 each, but in typical fashion I told myself I'm pretty sure I can make that with dollar store supplies, so here we are. Dollar Tree typically has plastic stemless wine glasses in the seasonal section. They have a little decal on them that changes with the season. Here are some summer ones that I saw last week. Whatever you buy, it doesn't even matter the color. You just need stemless plastic wine glasses to make this Pottery Barn dupe. First, I just cleaned them up with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. I don't know if this is totally necessary. I just wanted to give my spray paint the best chance of sticking to this plastic as possible. So just make sure that your glasses are clean. And then I grabbed these little wood rings. They were kind of like with like the macrame and the beading stuff at Hobby Lobby, I think. And I just used my miter shears. These were a lot easier to cut in half than I thought. Like it was super easy. And you just cut them in half. So you have a little semicircle, which is gonna make the perfect little hanger on top of my little wine glass bell. And so the way that I attached these was with my one-two punch super combo of E6000 and hot glue at the same time. So this is like a very small surface that you're working with. So on like one half, you do a dab of E6000 and on the other half, you do a little tiny dab of hot glue. And the reason I do this is because I'm impatient and I'm lazy. And that's because I want this to stick right away, which the hot glue does, does but I want this to also hold long-term, which the E6000 does. And by doing both of these, I can move on to my next step without waiting for the E6000 to dry. So just a tiny little dab of E6000 on each end of that little semicircle wooden ring, and then a tiny little dab of hot glue, and you're in business. And then I just took some white ultra matte spray paint primer in one and I gave these like a really good coat of spray paint several coats of spray paint and because there were those little decals on the wine glasses it actually took probably more spray paint than I had anticipated so if you can find plastic stemless wine glasses without the decal you'd probably be in better shape than I was then everything was painted and it was time to add the little like jingle ball hanger but the Pottery Barn one had like a little wooden hanger. It wasn't like a bell. So I tried to recreate that. I used like a 7 16 inch wooden dowel. I used my miter shears to just cut them down to length. I found it easiest to get the cleanest cut by like you make a little score and then rotate and then you make a little score and then you rotate. You make a little score and rotate and do that six or seven times and I feel like that gives you a cleaner cut than if you just snapped it all at once. And then I went ahead and just took some plain old Dollar Tree twine, wrap it two or three times around the wooden dowel, tie it in a knot, and then secure the ends with hot glue because you don't want to risk that knot coming undone. So I just added hot glue and I add, like folded the tail ends down. And then you want to set your little wooden dowel inside your cup to see like you want about, I don't know, a half inch, three quarters of an inch hanging out of the cup, like when the bell hangs. So you just kind of have to eyeball it and do your best and you may have to like do it and redo it, but just tie a few knots in that end of that twine, and then add a dab of hot glue to that triple knot, and then do your very best to set that hot glued knot 
right in the center of that wine glass. So I couldn't fit my hand into the wine glass, so I had to just kind of like hang it until it touched down and then use the end of a pair of scissors to kind of press that knot into place while that hot glue dried. I'm sorry, I like, don't have a better way to explain it. And it was kind of chaos, but it worked out. And then I had a little hanger for my bell. And then finally I cut, because I did bunches of three bells at a time, I cut three lengths of twine. I don't know, like 12 inches, 15 inches, 18 inches. Or 12, 18, and 24 inches long so that they're staggered lengths. And then tie a, a double or tie a regular knot and then tie another knot so there's two knots in your little twine and then you have a little hanger for your hanging belt these are super modern probably more modern than i would normally go but i like how they turned out here these ornaments are hanging on my dining room christmas tree last year i am sad to report that due to a mishap with a four-legged member of our family who shall remain unnamed one bell broke, so now I have five bells, which I think is the perfect number to hang in a cluster from the corner of a bookshelf, a cabinet, or the end of your living room mantle next to your stockings. So for this craft, I started with my three pop cans, actually two pop cans and a monster energy drink. I wanted to make them at varying height, so I used the monster drink to make an extra tall bell. I just grabbed my box cutter and just used that to cut the top off each soda can so that they were all at three different heights. At the very end there it might be helpful to use scissors just to get a clean cut. And then here I would use like craft pliers, but my craft pliers made their way into my son's fishing tackle box this summer and I haven't seen them since, so I had to use tweezers and in a pinch. You just want to bend over the cut edge of that can and then fold it over so you don't have any sharp edges. I have these silicone fingertip protectors that I use when using hot glue, which worked wonderfully in this craft just so that I didn't cut my fingers when folding over that edge. And then from here, I pulled out a hammer and I tried to kind of crunch up the cans a bit. If you hit them on the bottom, the sides will collapse a bit. You want to just kind of change the shape just enough so that it doesn't look like a soda can. And in hindsight, I should have done one more step and hammered the bottom of the can, which I'll show you later after I paint them. I didn't think to do it beforehand. But just kind of beat everything up a little bit. And then I just added a coat of black spray primer, took everything outside. I didn't want the silver showing on the inside of my bells, so I put on a rubber glove, I held up the can, sprayed the outside, and then I set it down very gently and then sprayed the inside as well. And then once that spray paint had dried, it was time to add two little holes to the bottom of each can, which is now the top of your bell. So I just took a nail and a hammer, and I hammered that nail right into the can and then pulled it out. You can kind of wiggle it around a few times to kind of make that hole a little bit bigger. You want to be able to run floral wire through that hole, or each hole, two to three times. Then it's time to make the little bell hangers. So I just used wood beads. These are like half inch wood beads. They were just for my craft stash. And I added some gold, antique gold, rub and buff with a pouncer brush. So I painted the wood beads first, and then I painted each of the three cans. So once again, this is Antique Gold Rub and Buff. I will link to it below. It's a go-to in my craft stash. I absolutely adore it. And I just used a pouncer brush back and forth, up and down, all over each can. But I didn't do like complete coverage, and this is why I chose a black primer. By letting a little bit of that black show through, it almost creates even more of an aged or a distressed gold finish. And then here's what I should have done before. The pop can bottoms look clearly like pop cans. So I set each pop can up right and I used the base of my hammer to kind of push it down the other way. So it just kind of like pushes the, the pop can bottom out the other direction.
And then it's time to make the hanger. So for this, I used gold floral wire, run it through one hole, pull it down, and then string on a wood bead. So this is gonna be the hanger part. Run it through the wood bead a few times, give it a twist, trim off any excess, and then you wanna hold the wood bead at whatever height you want it so it dangles out from the bottom of the bell just a little bit, and then run the other end of that floral wire through the second hole, pull it taut, and then run the floral wire back through the first hole. Having a good craft lamp is an absolute must on this so you can see what you're doing. And then pull everything tight so that the bell hangs securely. And now it's time to make the little hoop. And for that, I used just a paintbrush. I wrapped the floral wire around six times just to create that shape. And then I ran the floral wire back down through the second hole kind of adjusting my little hoop as I went. And then I pushed the floral wire back up through the first hole. And this was the hardest one. This is where the lamp comes in handy. And then from there, you have your tail end of the floral wire and you have your hoop or your circle. And to secure all six pieces of floral wire in that circle together, I just ran the floral wire in and out around that little circle to kind of secure everything together and create a little bit more visual interest. Give it a twist at the end and trim it off. And then from there, you have three individual bells, each with their own little hook that you can then hang up any way you like. There you have it my finished soda can bells. I'm pretty excited about how these turned out. Start by poking a hole very carefully in the top of your paper cup. I just used a pair of scissors and then carefully trim off just a tiny little bit of that upper rim of the paper cup. You don't want to trim so close to the bottom of the cup that the bottom like falls off, but you just want to kind of level out the bottom of the cup a little bit so when you add your rope, um, there's not a big height difference. Then take some holiday cord or you know, ribbon, whatever. This is like a jute cord with a little bit of metallic accent and poke the ends of the cord. So double it up, fold it in half, and then poke the ends through the paper cup. Determine how long you want your hanger to be. Um, if you're making two of these, I would make one long and one short. Tie it with a knot, and then before you tighten that knot, run a piece of twine through the knot and then tighten it. That way you have a piece of twine hanging down because we're going to add a jingle bell later. Then it's time to cover the paper cup in jute rope. So I get this at the Dollar Tree. Just start with one end at the bottom of the cup, which I guess is now the top of our project. Add a little bit of hot glue and start by swirling the rope around. So you're gonna make a coil to cover the entire bottom surface of the paper cup, which is now the top of the bell. So just be generous with the hot glue, work in small sections until you have a coil covering the entire bottom section of the cup. Then start working your way around the sides of the cup. Try to make sure there's no gaps between the layers of rope so that you don't have you know, green paper cup poking through. The reason why you have to use a paper cup for this project is because with all this hot glue, if you used a plastic cup, the plastic cup would for sure melt, so it has to be a paper cup. So I had little squiggly lines of hot glue in sections and then you know add a couple layers of the rope and keep going until you get to the very like the rim the top of the cup the bottom of the bell um it's disappointing with this because i wasn't able to cover the entire cup with one package of rope so you need a package of rope plus like a little bit more so when you get to that end trim it off and then make sure it's like a nice clean 90 degree angle and then add another section of rope until you get to the very end. And you wanna be sure to cover, like go add an extra row so that any of that paper cup isn't showing through. And then when you get to that final row of jute rope, 
when you're ready to finish it off. I would cut it at like a 45 degree angle so it's not such a stark, like abrupt ending. It, it's more tapered and gradual. And then all you want to do is grab a little jingle bell. Um, I'm making this project in August, so they did not have Dollar Tree jingle bells yet, so I had to go to the craft store. But just tie that onto the twine. I wanted my jingle bells to hang down just a little bit so you could see them more, so you don't want to have the twine so short that you can't see the jingle bell. And then trim the end of the twine off. Then how you decorate your jingle bell is completely up to you. I used just a little bit of faux boxwood, hot glued that to the top of my jingle bell, and then embellished with a simple bow. So I just made a figure eight bow with some thin black and white buffalo check ribbon and hot glued that right at the base of the little hanger at the top of the bell. But like I said, when you um, measure your hangers for the ornaments. You'll see here I have two different heights, so you can make like a tall one and a short one. Super cute to hang like on knobs, on like a cabinet, or on a hook on a door, or on your Christmas tree. But I am super excited about how this craft turned out, and I don't think anyone would be able to guess that it started with a paper party cup. The party supply aisle at Dollar Tree has all sorts of plasticware items, and I picked up a six pack of these mini round bowls, and we're going to turn them into holiday bells. So I just grabbed my six little bowls, and I wanted to add a half ring hanger. So I took these wooden circles from Hobby Lobby, but I've also seen them at Dollar Tree. And then I used my miter shears, M-I-T-E-R shears. Got them on Amazon, I'll link to them below. And I just added a dab of E6000 glue. It's not even really 6000 it's like the dollar store brand. A little dab on each end and then pop a little half ring right on top of each bowl. And then let that glue dry and that's gonna be the hanger for your bell. And then you also want something to hang inside the bell. And on a previous project, I used a round wooden dowel. And so for this, I'm gonna do a square wooden dowel. You just wanna cut it just so that it can hang out of the bell a little bit. So I cut mine about an inch, inch and a half. Once again, using the miter shears to just trim those down to length and you want six of them. And then you wanna spray paint absolutely everything. I've been loving this Rust-Oleum Hunt Club Green spray paint. So that's what I used here. I just went outside. Just a couple quick light coats. A note on spraying the little plastic cups. I f felt that I had the best luck holding, like I put on a plastic glove and I held the cup up to the light so I could see it from all angles until I had complete coverage. Then once that had all dried, it was time to paint the inside of the bell metallic. So I used my go-to Modern Masters paint in the color metallic brass. I ordered it on Amazon and I just painted inside each of those bowls. It took a couple coats to get complete coverage and then I also painted the little half wood ring hanger just for a little bit of contrast against that green. And I also very carefully just ran my brush along the rim of the bowl just to give like a more finished I guess line between the green and the brass paint. And then once the brass paint had dried, it was time to add my little hangers in. So for this, I used gold floral wire. It's from Michaels. You could also use just twine, but wrap it around your little square wooden dowel. And then on the other end, make a little tiny coil and that's gonna rest right inside the bowl. And for this, I used a combination of E6000 and hot glue. The E6000 gives me the long-term hold that I like, but the hot glue is gonna hold it in place right away. So just a little dab of each type of glue right next to each other, and then set that little floral wire coil right into the glue and set it aside until the E6000 totally hardens up. And then I just hung these very simply with some twine this is from michael's again it's like a cream colored holiday twine with a little bit of gold floss running through it but that's it these are a little different than regular bells i feel like they're a little bit more modern but still a great project for the holidays all 
All right, so I started out with these plastic shot cups from Dollar Tree and bare metallic gold or champagne gold matte spray paint. I saw this in Home Depot and I thought it was kind of cool. I'd give it a try. I just took it outside and gave it a few coats of spray paint. I will say this brand is a little bit more glittery, so it took like three or four coats to get good coverage. Then if I had used a solid metallic paint, it probably would have been like two coat coverage. So choose whatever spray paint you like and then it's time to assemble the little ornaments. So just cut a length of twine and then fold it in half and run that end through a little wood bead. Secure it with a knot on the two loose tail ends and then pull that wood bead down onto that knot. Then go ahead and tie another knot to hold your wood bead in place. And then trim off that tail end at the end of that knot as close to the knot as possible. Then add a little dab of hot glue to the top of your little shot cup. Place the knot right on top of it with the tail end kind of pointed towards you. The tail end is gonna poke out one direction, so point it towards you. That way you can cover it up with a bow. So I just took some plain old black and white check ribbon. I tied it in a simple knot. I did like the figure eight. You make two loops and tie them in a knot. Take some finagling here to get a bow that small. But once you have like your bow ears about the size that you want them, trim off the tail ends at a 45 degree angle and then place hot glue right on that tail end of that knot with the twine and cover that up with the knot in the center of the bow. But that's it. It's literally that easy to make a little bell ornament. I decorated these with a diff couple different uh, colors and patterns of ribbon with more classic red, white, and green. And then you can also, if you want to hang these individually or you can hang them in a cluster, you can do that as well. Dollar Tree has these metal bowls. They come in three sizes. I grabbed four of them in the smallest size, grabbed my heat gun, and those labels on the bottom just peeled right off. Be careful because the metal bowl does get kind of hot. Then just grab some E6000 glue and glue two bowls to, together. So add a line of hot glue along the rim of one bowl and then set another bowl right on top of it. Then you want to take a wood ring. These wood rings I think are about two inches or just shy of two inches around and just cut that wood ring in half. I used my miter shears for this because I use my miter shears on practically every project uh, but you could probably use heavy duty craft scissors as well. These cut pretty easily. More E6000 and glue one half of a wood circle on top of one of the bowls. Then you set everything to dry. I found that I kind of set these off to the side of my craft table and I kept crafting on other things and as I did I saw my bowls kind of shifting a little bit so I just used four tiny pieces of painters tape to hold the bowls in place overnight while I let that E6000 harden up. And then from there you just remove that painters tape and I just used plain white spray primer on this. I just took these outside. It did take a couple goes because I had to do like the tops and then I had to flip them over and then do the bottoms. Just try to get as best even coverage as you can. And then it's time to metallic these guys up. So I recently purchased off of Amazon and I'll share a link. I'm really loving this gold paint. It's Modern Masters Metallic Paint Collection satin finish in the color brass. It's a semi-opaque paint and I think it's just kind of like that perfect brass color that's super trendy with all of the bell crafts that are going on right now. So I just took a one inch flat paintbrush. I buy these paint brushes in like a multi-pack and I use them for everything. Just a nice even coat of paint all over this bell. And then I just grabbed a paper towel and I just dabbed all over that wet brass colored paint because I really wanted to stress these up. I'm really going for a super weathered, textured finish on this. So for the first coat, you're just doing kind of like a rough splotchy coat of this brass paint. So dab everywhere with the paper towel. Be sure to get in that ridge underneath the lip of the edge of the bowl. And then from here, this is all personal preference and creativity. So I ended up layering deco art, 
folk art home decor chalk paint in the color Maui sand, which is like Maui, like Hawaii sand. It's like a nice neutral gray color. Use whatever gray chalk paint you have. Add some gray paint, dab it with a paper towel. On the gray paint, I even kind of brushed side to side a little bit instead of straight up and down. And then I layered in more of this brass metallic paint. And on that, I just pounced straight up and down. And from here, it is as much or as little as you want. Go until you get the desired textured layered finish that you like. You can use more gray paint if you want it to be more matte and distressed. You can use more of the metallic paint if you want it to be um, a brighter, less weathered finish. But once you kind of got everything as weathered and distressed as you like, then just come in with some plain black chalk paint and paint that bell, that classic bell pattern on the bottom of the bowl. So for this, I just took a pencil and I sketched an outline and then used a fine point paintbrush to fill that in. And then you have these cute little faux jumbo bell ornaments that you can hang on your tree or add to a tear tray. For this craft, I grabbed a few gold bells from Dollar Tree. They had this floral detail on it. I just started by removing all of the embellishments off the top, just ripped those right off, and then I also removed the handle. And then you can discard all of that. And then I just gave everything a good coat on both the outside and the inside with this Hunt Club Green Rust-Oleum spray paint. You'll wanna do a few light coats for even coverage. And then it was time to add some gold paint. So for this, I just used antique gold rub and buff and a quarter inch flat paintbrush with very light strokes. So you don't wanna to add too much pressure. I found that by using lighter strokes, I was able to get more even coverage. And then I just followed all the contours of that detail and painted all of the flower embellishments gold. I would say just be careful to paint in the lines because since the green is spray paint, if you get gold paint somewhere where you don't want it to be, I'm not entirely certain what the fix would be on that. But then after everything was painted gold, I added my little hanger. So I cut a length of thin green ribbon, maybe two and a half feet long, add a piece of masking tape to one end, just so this ribbon doesn't fray as you're stringing it onto things. Run it through the center of the bell, and then measure kind of where you want the end of the ribbon to be, so like how long you want the ribbon to hang down, and tie a good like triple quadruple knot just so that the ribbon doesn't slide through the hole in the top of the bell you'll also reinforce it with some twine so it doesn't have to be a super tight fit and then I also took a half inch wood bead that I painted with that same antique gold rub and buff paint string that onto the end of the ribbon and secure it with a knot so that's your little hanger that'll hang down out of the end of the bell and then I cut the end of the ribbon and just heat sealed it simply because this ribbon that I was using frayed really easily and then you have a little hanger that hangs down out of your bell from there it was time to just cover that plastic piece that sticks up out of the top of the bell for this, I used this twine. I got it at Michael's, it's just a plain jute twine, and then it has some gold floss running through it. If you can't find metallic twine like this, just plain old dollar store twine would work fine as well. And then just very carefully add the tiniest dabs of hot glue as you coil that twine all the way around the top of the bell. 
and then finish it off when you get close enough to the top where all of the plastic gets covered and you're close enough to the ribbon that that final coil will probably hot glue to the ribbon so it stays in place. You can trim off the end of the twine and you're good to go. And so you'll see I made three of these. I think bells hang better in clusters or groups. But here are my finished green and gold bells for Christmas. The dollar store sells a variety of plastic holiday bells, but I grabbed these red scalloped type bells for this craft. I grabbed three of them and started with some black chalk paint. I just pulled all the hardware and like the decorative embellishments, it's like a little wire garland and a hoop. I ripped all that off and then, I don't know, like in an abundance of caution, I guess, I wiped everything off with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and then applied a quick coat of black chalk paint. This is just plain old deco art black chalk paint, but use whatever brand you like. Or you could even use like black spray primer outside. I painted both the outside and the inside of the bell because I didn't want the red showing on the inside. And then make sure you just get in all those nooks and crannies, especially around the base of the bell. It takes a little bit of effort, but you should be good for coverage with just one coat. Then once that black paint had dried, it came in with some silver paint. This was just some Deco Art Extreme Sheen silver paint that I had in my craft stash. Use whatever you like. The reason why I did the black base coat first is I knew for a fact I wasn't going to get good coverage with the silver. The red was going to poke through and so this way you have that black as your base and it almost makes the silver look more muted, which is a really nice effect that I like. And then once all that paint had dried, it was time to hang the bell. So I just grabbed some plain old twine. I ran a larger wood bead, so probably like a half inch wood bead, centered it on the twine and folded the twine in half, and then ran those two tail ends of the twine up through the bell. And then that wood bead would hold my little hanger in place. Started with a single knot, and then I strung on a smaller, like quarter inch wood bead through both pieces of twine and then secured it with another knot on top of the wood bead. And that's my hanger. And then it was time to kind of embellish with some greenery. So I had this kind of like frosted snow greenery. I cut off two tiny pieces, tied them together with a piece of twine And then I hot glued the twine knot right to the top of my bell. And then from there, used hot glue to wrap the twine all the way around that little piece of the bell that sticks up. So I wrapped the twine once underneath my greenery and then the rest of the times over top the greenery there. And for this, using this hot glue gun with that fine point was really helpful because you just want to put the tiniest bit of hot glue at varying intervals around that circle as you coil that twine up. And then once you kind of reach that wood bead and get all of that plastic top piece covered, you can then trim off the tail end of the twine and you're in business. And then here are my three finished bells hanging up together. You could hang these individually on a Christmas tree or hang them in a bunch with three or even five bells, however you like. 